now we want to get into the spreadsheets themselves. We'll probably touch on these calculators in various videos with the different strategies pertaining to the different games, but uh, here again in this poker math, um, poker math video series, I want to just kind of uh, give you a comprehensive overview so that you've at least seen it once. The fields in yellow, kind of this light yellow, are the fields that you're to in, uh, input yourself. Okay? You do that manually, everything else should semi-automate for you. Uh, here the pot, including the bets, uh, we've set up a scenario where you're playing in a 100, or you're on the button, and you're holding ace-king. So what happens is, uh, it's folded around to you, right? and as you see here, I believe it's in the viewing uh, area. You've got the player in the small, the small blind who's posted half of a half of a big blind and in a 100 of course is 50 cents and the big blind posted the $1 it's folded around to you, you make your steal raise as standard to three big blinds and small blind folds big blind then comes over the top for eight he raises two nine dollars total that's gonna give you the question to call, fold, or raise the amount to call in this scenario is six dollars exactly okay or six big blinds if you're thinking in big blinds when you do make that call okay, that call expressed as a percentage of the entire pot is forty eight percent um, expresses a ratio pot to call okay it's x to one which is two point oh eight to one these are your pot odds two to one when you make that kind of a call Let's say, let's say you're pushing all in for six. When you make this call all in, you're going to need to win one time in three in order to break even in the long run. That is what's called break even equity. Okay, in this scenario, you've got ace king, right? This guy comes over the top, uh, and you're going to have this equity all day long. Uh, again, we can go over here to the charts, the equity charts, ace king versus you know one player from the big blind who then three bets and you know he can be three betting even maybe twelve percent right and you're looking at this kind of equity with your ace king against these ranks so basically with ace king you know you're always gonna have that thirty two percent if you were to push all in now you're probably not gonna be pushing all in so if you're contemplating only calling right in this scenario you need to you need to have either this percentage chance of hitting a playable or profitable flop or um, you need to have some good moves uh, up your sleeve and you need to be able to outplay the guy post flop so that's where you know your stats come into play that's where your pr uh, player profiling comes into play and yeah various moves and for all of that this is all very much explained in, uh, in future videos but um, for now, we'll just leave it leave it at this. We're just doing pot odds. So um, when you make this six dollar call on twelve fifty, you're getting two to one pot odds, and that expressed as break even equity, right? The equity that you need to break even in the long run is thirty two percent. Online play, and of course in casinos, um, the house is taking a rake, right? And the rake is basically a certain percentage that the provider then takes from every given pot. In most scenarios, in most uh, at most online casinos, I believe even up to in a 1,000, they they cap it at 5% at either three or five dollars. Uh, just be clear on that whenever you're playing. In our scenario, for example, full tilt, uh, poker stars, etc., they they definitely just cap it at 5% in a 100, and um, yeah, and then they uh, it's 5% up to three dollars total. This calculator here, uh, this bottom line what we have here is the scenario when rake has been already subtracted so to make this call if there were no rake at all you're gonna need 32 percent equity to break even in the long run if you were to push all in with the rake you need 34 percent now when you do make this call the six dollar call on the 1250 he raised you up to nine dollars right he raised eight so to say two nine your call is six bucks when you just call cold the pot with your call, the H is the hero, right? So that's you. It's going to be 1850. The rake pot is going to be 1758. Your effective stack, if you're playing a hybrid strategy, um, would be 37 dollars because you made that three, and you haven't made the call yet. 
So you have this remaining stack. So of course, when you're contemplating a call, as I mentioned earlier, you're not only contemplating a call, of course, you're contemplating uh, also a fold, but um, very often a raise. And if that were the case, instead of just calling, let's say you, you push your entire effective stack of 33 or 37 over the top, right? When you do so, the villain, the V here, his break-even call percentage is 38.51 with the rake pot 39.7. The color coding is based again on this ace-king scenario. For example, this is yellow. He, he may have that even against your ace-king. Um, he could very often have that given any pair, uh, but again, you're playing against ranges and not just against individual hands. Let's say, for example, uh, you're not playing the hybrid strategy, but you're playing a big stack strategy. Right? In that case, you would have $97 right, as an effective stack. And when you push over the top in that scenario, the villain's going to need 45% to make that call, or 46 to make that call with the rake. Let's say you're playing a short stack strategy, where you buy in for 20 big ones. Uh, you make that steel raise, and now you've only got 17 left. And yeah, that's you see here how, how they calculated in updates, respectively. Um, let's take this back to 37. Let's say you do go ahead and decide not to call but to push. Okay, you go over the top, and the pot with an all-in, with your all-in, right, is going to be 49.5. Okay, without his, without the villain's call. With the rake, it's going to be 40, 47.03. Now, when you push and only one opponent calls, only one villain calls, the pot is in at that point 80.5, rake pot 77.5, which is exactly the $3 difference, okay? This final column shows you here the heroes re-raise, all in, break even percentage, <laughs> with only one villain calling. Means when you make that move, when you make that $37 push preflop, you need 45.96 uh, equity to break even in the long run. You need 47.74% to break even in the long run with the rake pot. This is conditionally formatted for a scenario where you're actually pushing the flop. Okay, so you're going to have two cards to come, and I've defaulted uh, these, yeah, these fields uh, as follows. Okay, the, the first section right here is for one card draws. Of course, you, you input this at any given time uh, just to get your pot on. It's also pre-flop, doesn't matter. Um, but the, the main idea is that this section of of the calculator is for one card draws, for example, on the flop. In that scenario here with this 32%, it's red because um, I've programmed it in the very, uh, the very likely scenario when you have ace-king, you miss the flop, which is going to happen 66% of the time, <laughs> and you've got two overcards. Hitting your overcard, uh, hitting either the king or the ace with one card to come is going to happen you know, somewhere around 12 to 13% of the time. You basically got 71, 71 odds against. One time at eight, you're going to hit, right? Um, and that is markedly less than the 32% you need to make that call. That being said, you can make that call if you think you have the implied odds, right, after making it when you do hit the ace of the king uh, to make up the difference. Okay, not always the case. A lot of people freeze up when those overcards hit. Um, this is for one card draws. This portion of the calculator, of course, is then for two card draws. That means when you push on the flop. So uh, here you're going to have two cards drawn to six over cards, and that's going to put you around 24% equity. Okay, or 24. It's going to give you a 24% chance of hitting one of your six outs, which we'll get into here shortly. Again, markedly less than the equity you need when one player calls you. But this again would be in a scenario when you then push on the flop. Right, you have very exact um, knowledge of what you need to hit right, in those two cards to come. When you look at pre-flop pushes, um, that ace-king is going to have 45% even against um, almost all of the pairs. You know, don't, let the, don't let the colors confuse you. Uh, it's defaulted, as I just explained, and yeah, I hope that's clear. Let's say, for example, uh, you are on the flop, right? And the pot is then at this point 1850. Let's say we just make our call. 
right? Because uh, sometimes you just call colds, you know, with Ace King in position on the button. Why not change up your play from time to time? Nothing, nothing wrong with that. And the guy um, in the big blind makes a standard C bet. And let's say um, you haven't hit your Ace or your King, and he goes ahead and bets bets out half pot. Okay, it's, let's say for example, um, non-suited, non-connected board. And he thinks half pot is going to do the trick, right, instead of a two-thirds pot size. At that point, your call is here 9. And now you no longer need 2 to 1, uh, or uh, 30, say, what was it, 32% before. You now are getting 3 to 1 odds, right? So you need to win now only one time in 4 in order to break even in the long run. So one time in 4 expressed as a break even percentage, right, is 24.66. So any time your equity based on your hand, or based on your draw, is greater than 24.66%, right? you can make that call. Okay, so let's say you don't, um, you don't then opt for the call here, but you opt for the push. And at this point, your effective stack is going to be um, minus your call, 31. Okay, And that's how they calculate it in updates, respectively. And as you see here, of course, the pot with the all-in and one call stays the same. It's just your uh, required equity changes, right? your break-even equity changes, given the different pot odds. Okay, guys, I hope that was I hope that was clear. And now I'd like to move into this next calculator, which is your push calculator. Um, this is a scenario where you're not contemplating then a call uh, based on somebody's raise, but you're contemplating then, of course, in this case, a push. The way you enter these cells here again in, in light yellow is as follows. Here is the, the pot total at the point when you make your push. The effective stack, your effective stack, the hero's effective stack at the beginning of the betting round. Okay, it's a bit different. It's not the 37 here since you've already posted right this 3. It's calculated based on your total stack at the beginning of the betting round that was including all of your bets or blind posts up to that point. If you're pre-flop and you're playing this hybrid strategy, yeah, where you're buying it for 40 big blinds, looks as follows, you know, you, you had made that $3 steel raise on the button, you got 3 bet, and that's what your effective stack was at the beginning of the betting round, namely uh, pre-flop. Your total bet was this $3 or 3 big blind steel raise, the dead money minus the rake, right? So here you actually have to take it out yourself. Right? It's basically the posted blinds plus your raise minus three bucks for the rake. In a 100, uh, generally going to be the case, especially when you're playing a big stack strategy. Heroes assumed equity versus your opponent's range. This is again based on hand matchups versus opponent's ranges. So. We've again got this scenario where we're playing Ace King, right? In this case, Ace King O, and we're given our villain here a range, a three bet range of five percent. So we've put him on nines are better, Ace Queen or Ace King. Okay, so our equity at that point, right, pre-flop, based on that range, is forty-eight point seven percent. Exactly this. Now, if we assume that our opponent will never fold. Right, so of that 5% that he's raising there, he's going to call everything when we push over the top. Even when he never folds, based on this equity, our EV, our expected value for that push, the monetary value for that push is $1.19. So in, in L100, 1.19 uh, big blinds. That's this calculation right here. And it's green, of course, if you're winning money. Um, let's say you raised with a uh, suited 5.6, right, and the guy came over the top. If he has an overpair, then you're looking <laughs> something like this, you know, probably 18% uh, or less. That means that your opponent is going to have to hold a lot of hands in order for you to get back in the green over here. Uh, let's say you raised with uh, Ace-10, uh, Ace-10-0, and you put the guy on the same, on the same uh, range over here. I okay, let's say we've, we've raised with Ace-10 offsuit as a steal. And we get re-raised uh, re by the same guy. Yeah, so we're going to have 28.3% against that entire range. With our holding 
versus this 5.1% 3-bit range. Okay. And he never folds. We're going to lose 14 bucks every time we make that move, namely 14.24 big blinds. The cool thing about this calculator is uh, what I've done here is added these cells such that they just default to what's entered above, right? what you enter above yourself. And this shows you here what your entire fold equity, or what your necessary fold equity is, the minimum fold equity for a zero EV push. Anytime your opponent is in folding 53.24%, or better, you're going to get to zero. Um, that means if you think he's folding of that range, if you think he's going to fold you know, 60% of that range, you're just coming into the positive EV situations. This is a really, really useful calculator, um, especially for, pot, uh, for flop pushes and turn pushes, um, where fold equity can be quite high, you know, where you have more exact information on your draw, um, especially pushing, semi-bluff pushing here. Uh, this calculator is phenomenal. And again, that is available to the members of our site. You know, this is just, a, again, a very, very brief overview of how you can utilize these calculators in play. Uh, and also how that kind of relates to pot odds as such. Uh, last calculator down here we've got in a situation where you're in the cutoff or the button and it's folded around to you and you make a move. So in our little calculator here we've got this fold to steal in the big blind. That's a stat that we'll cover here in the next video. Um, fold to steal in the small blind and uh, our button steal size in big blinds. So again we're going with the same scenario here. Uh, we've got Ace King on the button. It's folded to us. We make a steel raise of three big blinds. Okay, an open raise. Um, the way this works out is if we make this raise with any two cards based on the fold equity that we have from these two players behind us to our left in the small blind and the big blind, even when we fold every, or even when we bet that with any two cards every single time in that situation, and we're certain about these two full percentages, right? We're going to be making 0 0.04 big blinds in the long run every time we do it. So that means whenever we, we bet three, just based on fold equity alone, we're going to be making this in the long run. So, okay, that being said, that means you have to also fold <laughs> anytime these guys raise. It's a bit more complicated than that, but, you know, if these were static numbers, you could just bet this three bucks all day long when it's folded to you and you're in the in the button or on the button and be making money. Okay, very little money, but yeah, not enough. Um, as these numbers change, and you can enter them yourself, let's say, for example, uh, small blinds only folding 60%, and this guy's only folding in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the big blinds only folding 60%, and the small blinds in folding 70%. So that move in itself is no longer profitable just as a bluff. Player in the small blind who had posted 0.5 blinds, right, he folds, and again our villain here in the, in the big blind, he then raises us up to 9. Hero's effective stack is 37, okay, that's a remaining stack, and this is how this plays out. Um, we have, of course, exactly the same option here. To make that call, where we're going to need this 32.43% equity to make that call if we were to push all in, in the very long run. Right. Or we're going to need this kind of probability to hit a playable flop, which we definitely would have with an ace-king scenario. Almost exactly that, right, for hitting an ace or a king. Many things speak for a call in that scenario. Many things also speak for a push. Um, a lot of three-bet uh, raises from the button, from, especially from good players, are going to be very light three-bets, uh, meaning that they're not raising with, with premium hands. Right? So when you come over the top, you're going to have a lot of full equity here you know, getting into this kind of range. We're here with our, spec our effective stack of 37, right? And if we just make that call, again, you see here, we've, we need 32% uh, exactly this to make that call in the long run, right? To break even in the long run. 34% with the rake. We, of course, have the option to push over the top. And when we do that, the villain in the big blind, when he makes that four bet call, he's gonna need a break even percentage Right, break even equity of 38.51% or 39% with the rake pot. Whenever we push and he then calls, break even percentage with one call from the big blind.
In the case, of course, exactly the same here. Um, we need 45% equity to make that move, banking on one call from the big blind, okay, with the rake then 47%. Uh, new scenario, we raise open with ace-king on the button, small blind then raises, or re-raises, say, he three bets us, and the villain in the big blind, including his big blind post, calls. And now when we push over the top, we're not looking at um, break-even percentages here for one villain call from the big blind or one villain call from the small blind. We're looking over here at both calling. And it, as that's the case, when we then push over the top and both call, we only need 30% equity to break even in the long run. Um, we're very often going to have that with ace-king and, and very often much more. All right. uh, here you just enter your big blind, uh, whatever level you're playing, this will then update everything else based on the, the stats for you. Especially when you're playing yeah, four tables or less online, you can definitely incorporate this calculator. Um, and all these different uh, scenarios on the fly.